Good morning, everybody. It's Diana with StebbingWithDie.com, and I am here with this week's Mimeograph Monday. And I love to thumb through the catalog. I know I have um, mentioned that before, and I um, put post-it notes on cards that I get ideas from or ones that I want to um, to copy for the Mimeograph Monday. So this time I am doing the super cute senior years and hey that's me now so i thought i'm gonna have fun with this set and i love the little guy he kind of looks like my father-in-law to be to be honest with you so super cute all right so um i have all my stuff ready and hopefully you're ready and let's get started on the fun card this cute little couple in the catalog are so adorable. So I was so excited to play and make this card today for the Mimeograph Monday. And it's February the 1st. Can you believe it? February is already here. So here's the cute little stamp set, Senior Years. And that's the one I'm going to be using. It's got some fun little greetings with it. So I have my little recipe. So this is... Um, tells you what's used in the catalog. Um, it was a it, it was a little confusing. It said card base size was four inch square, but yet the instructions said the card measures four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I went with the four and a quarter by four and a quarter um, just because it gives you you know a little bit more room. So let's get started. So the cardstock that I'm using is um, Pear Pizzazz. I'm using Whisper White Thick, Seaside Spray, and then this is the little guy I've stamped on the Whisper White Thick to color. But I did make a change and I did put a piece of white around these two pieces of DSP and I'll explain why later. I also didn't realize that I didn't have the paper color um, velveteen. I had velveteen in the real red. Um, so what I did was I just grabbed, because this is from the 2019-2021 um, in color, six by six. That's where the Seaside Spray came from. And I'm using the Cinnamon Cider uh, blends so what I did was I just pulled out my 2020 by 2022 in color 6x6, and that has a cinnamon cider car, or DSP, and they looked perfect together. So if you don't have um, the Velveteen, that's, that was my way of correcting that. And I don't think if you look at the card necessarily, you would even realize it was different. So, um, so that is a little bit different. So while I get um, going, I'm just going to assemble these pieces before we get started. And I will put all the measurements down in the description so that you can make your own card as well. All right. And then this is going to go on here. So this right here is four by four, but like I said, I'll put the directions. Cause I, um, in my mind, when I'm cutting my paper, I use dits in my head. I know that's crazy. But when I'm cutting, I'll say one dit before the four or one dit after the four when I'm cutting. So you don't want to listen to that. So I will uh, measure for real and I get my simply scored out and that helps me um, measure accurately. All right, so this is ready to go on the card when we're ready. So I just wanted to get that done. And then my seaside spray is the four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I'm looking all over from my bone folder. And of course, I don't see it. So we're just gonna give it a good crease with my fingers, it'll show up tomorrow. Okay, so then what I did was I have my little guy and he's stamped with memento on some whisper white or basic white thick. And we are just going to color him with the blend. So let me scoot down just a bit, to try to get my light so that you can see a little better. 
We are also going to be using the Playing With Patterns Resin Dots. And all I did was I took my basic black dark Stampin' Blends and I just colored right on <clears throat> the dot. And now I have a basic black resin dot. <clears throat> Excuse me for the frog in my throat. We are also using stitched shapes to put our little guy on. And to me, he kind of looks like a golfer. I don't know if it's because of his little um, checkered pants, but he does remind me though of my father-in-law. He does kind of look like him when he was a little younger. All right, all right, so I'm going to use Flirty Flamingo. Flirty Flamingo was not mentioned on the supply list, but you know me, I need to put little healthy cheeks on my people and my critters. So that's just your light flirty flamingo. So if you've watched any of my videos, you know that's pretty much a staple in my, um, in my coloring. All right, now this is the dark petal pink and I am going over the, the flirty flamingo and it will just soften it a, a little bit. So I'm going up under the hairline where it would be a little bit darker down here with the chin and in the ear there. All right. And then the light petal pink to finish it off. And I'm just using the, the, the um, smaller side of the Stampin' Blend. You can use whatever one you want. I just find I have a little bit more control over the smaller end. Not that I don't use the brush side, but I just find myself using the smaller one more often. All right, so there we've got our cute little guy. And I am going to add just a little bit more of the pink because I blended it out just a little bit too much there and he's got a little rosy nose because if he is a golfer you can be darn tootin he's got a suntan on his nose okay let's do his hair so his hair is going to be the gray granite so I or crumb cake all right so I'm pulling out my my crumb cakes so this is the dark crumb cake. So just as long as hairline, it would be a little bit darker. And then the light crumb cake. So cute. And then of course, don't forget his little eyebrows. And I just did them in the light crumb cake. Then we're gonna do his little britches or his little pants. And that is a cinnamon cider. So I'm just taking the dark first. And I don't know, I, I just always seem to grab dark before the light. I don't know. Some people do the opposite. I say either one is fine. You really, it is really hard to mess up coloring with the Stampin' Blends. So I'd always kind of gravitate to grabbing the dark first. And then I'm going to follow with my light and fill in the rest of his little pants. I love how he's got this kind of like a little bow-legged stance to him. This is such a cute little set. And then I'm going up into that dark just a little bit to soften those edges. And then I'm gonna come back with the dark just underneath the vest because it would be a little bit darker because of the overlapping of the vest. And in here where his little vest is as well. So see what I mean? You really can't mess it up. All right, let's see. I'm also choosing gray granite. Now this was not mentioned, but you know me, I have to add a little bit of me on it. So I wanted to just put a little bit of um, a gray granite ground underneath him. So that's no big deal. All right, then his vest, not his vest, but his shirt 
is Seaside Spray. So we're gonna do his the dark first. So up under his armpit and around here and then along inside here and also the cuff. So along here, that's where the arm would bend. And the collar. And it would also come down here a little bit. And if you don't, if you are confused in regards to shadows and stuff like that, just put something on your desk or put on a piece of clothing and go look in the mirror and just kind of look at how the light hits different areas of your clothing. Because whether it's sunlight or a light bulb, the light hits it differently. So that will kind of help you in regards to, to learning what is lighter and what is darker. But you know what? There's not going to be a stamp and blend police officer come to your door and say, hey, that should have been darker there. It's all fun. All right, so I'm just going back with my dark and just to put a little bit more. So that looks good. I just love that you can, you can play around with them. Unlike the stamp and write markers, you couldn't do that. I don't even know the last time I used a stamp and write marker, to be honest, because I just always gravitate towards the blends. Okay, let's do his little shoes, and they are going to be with soft suede. So, dark soft suede up here on the top of his shoes. And light soft suede. And then I forgot to turn my timer on. So hopefully I won't have any issues. It was so funny last time I was doing it and it just stopped taping and I was like, why did it stop? And okay, I'm going to do this light soft suede belt. And I really don't know, although I had opened up the, um, but sometimes I think it's too dark, but, um, the video when it tapes. So I had opened up for some reason the little flash thing, and I think it just, after a time, it, it turned that off. So who knows? All right, so this is the light basic black on the buttons and the belt. He said he's starting to get get together. Okay, now one thing it did say on the directions was it also used it also used um, dark. Well, it just said sea foam. It does not say if you use one or the other. And I was not a fan of the sea foam, but it also listed the Granny Apple. So I just chose to use um, Granny Apple. For the whole vest, I didn't use the sea foam. So that's my uh, taking my artistic, what would you call that? I don't even know the word for it. All right, so this is just a dark granny apple green. I guess just changing it a little bit. And that's what you want, you want to do too. If you're at home and you go, oh, I want to make that butt. I don't have the velveteen paper. Well, hey, I didn't either. Just pick something you do have. But you're just being inspired by this amazing samples that are in the catalog. All right, now this is the light granny apple. And I'm just filling it in the rest of the way. And I'm just going up into that, just briefly into the dark, just to soften that line. And as it dries, it will look even better. And I just have a piece of the basic, if I didn't say, this is just the basic um, white thick underneath. And it just catches any of the, um, the blends that bleed through. Because they will bleed through. 
you want them to bleed through. I mean, that's what what they're meant to do because you want them to saturate that paper. All right, so that looks pretty good if you ask me. Okay, so I do believe my little guy's done. All right, so let me put all these blends away so we can put our card together. All right, I also want to stamp my little greeting. So the greeting that was used on the outside is, is it hot in here? The sayings are so fun. Is it hot in here or is it just the candles on your cake? So I'm going to stamp that on the pear pizzazz cardstock. Let that dry for a second. I'm going to get my memento pad over there. All right, so we're just going to let that dry for a second. And then I need my snips. And where are my snips? Are you kidding me? Oh, there they are, right in front of me. All right. So then we're just going to cut our little guy out. So let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. So we're just going to cut our little guy out. And you'll notice when I'm cutting, I'm moving my little guy. I'm not moving my scissors. I'm just squeezing my scissors. And I'm moving my little guy. And then you'll get like a smoother cut. Now I do find that the thick, you want your scissors good and sharp for the thick. And then I just kind of go, get that away. Then it's not catching on the scissors because sometimes it'll catch on that little um, knobby thing there. So if you cut it away, you don't have that catching while you're trying to cut. And I love to fussy cut. I get that from my granny, I think. So fussy cutting is great. I mean, I love dyes. I wish, kind of wish there was a dye for everything. But um, it's a great relaxing thing to do. You can do it anywhere. You can get these all colored up and just sit one day and get them cut out when you need them. You could have the TV on. You wouldn't want to be driving your car and cutting out. But, you know, okay, so look how cute. He's all cut out. I also want to cut out my greeting. So this is, I'm just getting off all that excess. All right, so just follow the greeting. And... I'm not even worrying too much if it's super, super straight because it's such a fun card. I mean, just the way it's it's worded, it's a, it is a fun little card. All right, so let's put our card together. We are also using the antiqued corners and slides elements. So I need to get the little belt buckle one out. So they have like photo kind of corners, if I can pick it up, photo corners and the little belt. So we're going to use the belt when I put it back in there. And I'm also going to be using the faux suede trim. And this is why I put the white piece of paper. So if you look in the catalog, they have the ribbon going on the inside of the card. I'm not a fan of that. Like I don't want somebody to open up the card and then the ribbons in here. So that's why I chose to trim this down a little bit so that I could do um, this white border. And now the ribbon will go around it. So I am, I'm going to, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Because, oh, this is what I want to do. I want to put some dimensionals on here. So sometimes you'll go, what is she doing? So I'm going to put a dimensional here, here, because I know where my card is going. And I'll show you why I'm doing this in a reason in a minute. And so I'm peeling all these off because I want this to go on the top, but I want this ribbon to be in here. Okay. 
So then I have to make sure I'm even with the camera without getting my head in it. All right, so now we have this. But the ribbon is on the inside of the card, okay? So then I wanna, I'm gonna pull a piece over. This piece is way too long. All right, that's good. Let me make it a little bit shorter. And then this one is going to go this way. So I'm just going to cut it like that. Then we are going to thread our belt buckle. So let me scoot in so I can show you what I did. So I have my little belt buckle and I cut the ribbon at a point and I'm going up and then I'm threading it down. So now you have your ribbon going like that and then I just pulled it back a little bit because I also want this one to go through it. So then while that hole's there, can you see that hole? Then this goes up. And then it's going to go in this hole. So you're, it's going both directions. So it's, that's why it's important to tie it or to cut that ribbon at a point. All right, and then you just kind of pull them together and look at it. It like tightens that um, buckle. But I want my buckle to be over here because that's how the catalog has it. So my buckle is over here. And then I have this floppy piece, but it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it off and I'm going to tuck it up underneath because you won't see it because the little guy is going to be on there. So then I take my glue dot and I go up underneath the ribbon and put my glue dot in there. It's held in place. And then we can just, if we want to, we could scoot that over just a little bit and then cut this at an angle. And look how adorable. It's a little belt. So it matches the little belt on his pants. And then we just have to simply mount, put our card together. All right, so we have our circle and I'm using a lot of dimensionals. So we have a dimensional on the top. Now I'm avoiding putting any dimensionals in the center because I want to avoid the belt buckle or the belt. I don't want to put any dimensionals here. So I made sure to put top and bottom so that this is going to get, allow that ribbon to go in between it. All right. So we're gonna stick that on there. Then we're gonna put our dimensionals on our little guy. I love dimensionals, I hope you do too. They just add, they make your card so cute. And it's better to use more than not enough because we don't want any saggy card and we sure don't want a little saggy golfer guy. All right. So here's that. And then our little greetings we're going to put on. And I used these. So these were not mentioned, but these are the um, adhesive strips and they're perfect for skinny greetings. So I just cut them to the length I need and then I just peel, peel them off. So is it hot in here? So I'm just doing it on the one side and I need to stack it because we have to go over. We've got a couple Oh, there's my phone, or there's you-know-who, ding-dongin'. All right, because we have, we're going over a couple dimensionals, so I had to make it pretty high. So I stacked them because I have to go over this. All right, so is it hot in here? And then I'll just need to do one for the other one because it isn't as high. So the strips are fine, especially when you have skinny little greetings. 
All right. Is it hot in here or is it the candles on your cake? Isn't that so fun? And then I need to put my little um my cute little playing with patterns. So I'm going to put one here and one here and then these just kind of are like his shirt buttons so it almost looks like this is his shirt here his button in his belt and then on the inside I could not resist this saying let me just show you because my time is almost coming out all right let me show you <laughs> so here's the finished card so is it hot in here or just the candles on your cake which is weird because we're both about 29, right? So isn't that the most cutest little card? So, but I would love, love, love for you to, um, I would love for you to say, hey, I would like you to see a certain card and um, let me know because it's always fun to um, get requests and stuff. So please let me know if there's anything in particular you want to see. And um, thanks for joining me today. And we will see you tomorrow for my Teach Me Tuesdays at the three o'clock Arizona time in my Facebook group. All right, so have a great day and um, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.